Jess. With Jess Joycelyn. <laughs> I am Jess Joycelyn. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you've decided to join me on my channel. And as we go into God's word today, again, um, please, 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 please subscribe and also hit the notification button um, so that that way you'll be able to always see when I post and we'll be able to communicate and talk with one another as we're going through uh, this life as Christians and learning to be more like him. All right. And the way this thing works is basically as God gives inspiration to me through his word, I share it with you. And like I said before, it's our time to communicate and you are there and are there and I am here and that is two or more gathered and we're actually going to find out where that scripture is today because I've always kind of wondered where that was and so it's in Matthew so we're looking at Matthew today chapter 18 verses 15 through 20 again that's Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 through 20 and it says this if your brother or sister sins go and point out their fault just between the two of you Okay, so before you turn this off, I'm not here to condemn you or you or you or you or you or you. Okay, I clearly understand that as my finger is pointed here, I got like four looking back at me. Three, four, yeah, looking back at me. So please, 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 hold up. Let me finish. All right, I'm going to start again. Verse 15, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree on anything, ask for it and it will be done for them by my father in heaven. So where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with you. Wow. So this is an interesting word and it's always preached different ways. Um, but again, if you've watched any of my other videos, one of the things that really just blows my mind is how much God desires to be in relationship with us and how he models for us how we are to be in relationship with one another. And so if you look at this right here, you have somebody in the church and you might you may be uh, been the recipient of someone trying to um, talk to you about your sin or whatever that you're doing. But saying all that to say, I have actually have seen some really messed up ways about people trying to lovingly um, give you correction. And the word of God does say this, um, a fool turns away correction. Not calling you names, but if somebody is trying to teach you something and you know that you are struggling, y'all, we should try to listen, you know, and, and, you know, we're in this like society of if you ain't for me, you against me. If you try to tell me something that I don't like, you a hater. And I ain't thinking about you. But sometimes y'all, it ain't hate. It's actually like tough love. You know, you know that person that you got around you that if you be like, hey, was I tripping on it? Mine. Was you? You need that person in your life. You do. If you're to grow, you need to have people that are able to help you in that. You need to have people that give, can give you some wisdom. If you're always around yes people, girl, you the bomb. Dude, you did that. You did that. Sometimes you're going to get to a point where you're like, man, that sucked. No, man, that was the bomb. Man, you did that. You did that. But, dude, I didn't make the three-point shot. Yeah, you didn't make it, but uh, it kind of went around the rim. It was finna go on that thing. You, you, yeah, you almost did that thing. And you do need people that are encouraging. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. But you also need people who are going to tell you the truth. And the reason why um, I really like this passage is because, again, the relationship and pursuing. And we as Christians, those of us who do believe in God, we have to be careful um, in the way that we talk to one another. You know, God had us to pursue like he pursued us. But at the same point, we have to talk to people in love. How are you going to talk to me about the things that I'm doing and you don't even really know my last name? 
You don't really know the things that, you know, that I like. You don't even ask me about, you know, how was my day or, you know, about my family or, you know, you, you see what I'm saying? You even know me. So how are you going to come to me and try to talk to me about my sin or the things that I'm struggling with? And you don't have no relationship with me. God is all about relationship. So whether, um, and the interesting thing about this passage uh, that Jesus is speaking, he's speaking to the church. So this ain't even about people who don't know him. He's speaking to the church. And the interesting thing about Jesus is number, number one, whenever he talked to anyone, whether they were in the church or outside of the church, he always met them where they are. He always pursued relationship. He always pursued relationship. And then he told them the truth. You see what I'm saying? So you should always have a relationship with somebody. Don't just be just coming off the cuff trying to just tell them what they're doing wrong. They're going to look at you like, who? Why should I even trust you? I love it in the word. It says that if your brother or sister um, sins, point out their faults just between the two of you. It is not. Don't be putting people on blast. Don't be putting people on Facebook talking about some girl. I saw you did this right here. You know you was wrong for that. Why would you do that? The first thing you're going to do, if you're going to talk to them on social media, which I don't think you should, but if you're going to talk to them on social media, media, if you're on Facebook, do it on Messenger. Direct message them. Be like, best friend, um, I saw what happened with this right here, and I want you to know, you know, I love you, this, and this, and this, and this. And even before all of that, before all of this, pray first. Pray, because that person might know what they're doing is wrong and God is working on their hearts. And so you want to make sure that you approach them in the right way. You see what I'm saying? Um, the second thing that it says in the word in verse 16, it says, but if they, if they listen, you won them over. So cool. You talk to them, Hey friend, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, you know, God says this, you right, you right. I'm gonna do better. You want them over. But if they do not listen, it is not time for you to go in. You better listen. You're not going into that mode. <laughs> now it's time to you to continue, time for you to continue with the compassion and say, take somebody else with you so that even the matter may be established by the testimony of two or three. So if you try to go talk to them and they won't listen, then take somebody else. Take somebody else that they trust, somebody else, and then um, try again. And hopefully they'll listen. If they still will not listen, then you bring it before the church. What folks like to do to try to make themselves look good, yes, um, Watch College is dealing with this, y'all. And um, this and this, don't put people on blast. Again, like I said in the beginning, the thing I love about God is he is relational, one-on-one. -on -one. So if you see that somebody is dealing with something or even that they have a need, may you meet that need. It's not all about you getting glory because you help somebody. Don't be taking selfies of you uh, helping people, giving them groceries and stuff. What is that? Don't be taking selfies of you, girl, she ain't even had no car, so I just had to bless her with, no car, with a car. Boom, boom, hashtag love God saving these folks. What kind of garbage is that? Anything that you do in the word, it says you do it in secret. It is not about you getting glory. It's about God getting glory. And I'm sorry if I sound really passionate about that, but we have to know that God is a relational God. It is not about you getting glory, but it's about him getting glory. And we are his hands and feet. And when people see us, they are seeing the reflection of who he is. And if I'm coming off kind of hard, you know, God has put this on my heart. It's not just to you, but it's to me as well. We have got to make sure that we think in, that we're thinking about uh, things in terms of God getting glory and not in terms of us getting glory. It is not about us. Man, Noel uh, Jones, Pastor Noel Jones had this song. It's not about us. Dun, boom, boom, dun, dun, dun. Hey, but it's about Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm. Then, the, then the choir come in. It's all about you. Hey, hey. But it's about Jesus. Man, that John is on point because it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. It's about him getting the glory. The next thing they say after that is um, if they decide that they do not want to listen, they're not listening to you, they're not listening to other folks, two or three that are trusted, they're not listening to the church leaders, then at that point, what you have to do is kind of let them go and pray for them. 
And when I say let them go, I'm not talking about you cutting them off and never talking to them again, but you have to put them in God's hands and let God take care of it. Because sometimes, you know, some of us, us get stubborn and we don't want to let go of what we're doing. We not, we, we feel like we ain't ready, you know? And so at that point, We've done what we're supposed to do, and we let God handle them. Does that mean that we don't still love them? No, we still love them because God ain't leave us alone. But at that point, you've done what you're supposed to do. So you still love, but you pray for them because God is going he gonna, to he gonna talk to them. And God can, if, he have, if, if it has to get to that point, God going to really let them go through some stuff that's going to you know, really shake them and bring them back to him. But you still image him and be who he's called you to be. Um, next thing, it's really cool in the word, uh, it talks about, um, bring on one other thing, uh, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be with them. That's the last thing I wanted to bring up. And y'all, um, I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes you might feel a little insecurity like, God, I don't know if I can talk to this person, or I don't know if I know enough scripture, or I don't know if they'll receive me. Um, but the word says where two or more are gathered, he will be in the midst, which means before you talk to him, pray and ask God to give you the words to say and pray to him that he will um, help you even to have wisdom in, in, in approaching them. Um, your body language or something you say can set them off the wrong way. And so before all things, prayer before all things, prayer before all things, prayer before all things. Prayer before all things. Before you get ready to talk to someone or minister to them, please make sure that you pray um, because God is always working and he's always setting things up. And if he puts you, blesses you to be a part of that person's journey, please make sure that you're praying and, um, and you're seeking him for a wisdom so that you can continue to push them the right way. And let me say this too, if you are somebody and you're encouraging someone and it seems like that they're not receiving you or they don't, that does not mean you didn't do your job. Um, it's our job to plant the seed. That's it. Somebody else will come along and water it. Somebody else will come along and give it a little miracle grow. You know, uh, it's not your job to do the saving. God does it. And as a matter of fact, he already did it. And so sometimes it just takes time for that seed to grow and blossom all right so let's go to God in prayer God we thank you so much for your love and we thank you that you are a relational God meaning you desire to have um, a closeness an intimacy with your children God we pray that you would uh, just continue to just um, change our hearts make us new Lord God we confess our sins Lord God we know that we are not perfect Lord God but we thank you that you are changing us and making us new every day um, God, we thank you for your blood that covers us, Lord God. We are sinners saved by grace, and we just say thank you, Lord God. Uh, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. God, I, I pray that my uh, my brothers and sisters are encouraged in you as they're going on their journey and speaking to others about you, Lord. I pray that the word is love, 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 uh, so that they might know uh, who you are, God. And I pray uh, for those who do not know you. Uh, I, I pray that they realize that the only thing they need to do is confess that they are sinners and they need to believe that you died on the cross for our sins and rose again. And if they believe that today, they are saved. And I'm so happy to welcome them into the body of Christ. And for those uh, of us who still not sure, it's cool. Uh, Jesus is still standing there. Take your time. Um, read the Bible. Look at history. Find him for yourself. And I guarantee he'll blow your mind. <laughs> and with that being said, um, God, we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. So go about your day. <laughs> Have a good one, and I look forward to talking with you on tomorrow. Y'all be blessed. Yeah.